So hello to our audience today, uh, wherever you might be listening to uh, this uh, interview. Uh, my name is Pilvi Mosquitiello and I work as an uh, impact facilitator within the BAS, uh, so British Antarctic Survey innovation team. Um, I'm going to um, interview Björg Apeland, uh, one of our mechanical engineers uh, at BAS uh, today. And you're going to hear a little bit more about her career and what she does. Um, so Björg, would you start by introducing yourself, uh, saying your pronouns and just a little bit about your background? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, my name is uh, Björg Apeland. I'm Norwegian. My pronouns are she and her. I work at the British Antarctic Survey or BAS as a mechanical slash uh, marine engineer. Uh, and I work within the engineering and technology department at BAS. Um, and um, could you say a little bit about your like um, your studies and how you got into engineering, uh, where it all started for you? Yeah, uh, so I didn't really realize that engineering was a, a possibility until I got into my teenage years. But uh, as a child, I loved Legos and I was pretty good, a big, big fan of maps uh, in school. And so when I realized I could kind of combine these two, then, then I kind of had to, had to become an engineer. Um, I also think I had like, a, or remember anyways, uh, having like this need to understand how the world was put together. And I felt like engineering was sort of the way, way to figuring out how, how stuff is built. Uh, in terms of polar research. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask next. So in terms of polar research, how did you end up there? Sorry, I didn't catch that. All right, <laughs> that's okay. So one thing that we forgot to mention is that uh, Björg uh, is actually in the Falklands today. So our connection might be a little bit patchy as we are um, uh, recording this, uh, but uh, hopefully you can bear with us uh, with a little bit of uh, technical glitches, glitches here and there. So what I asked Björg was, uh, how did you get into polar research as you were about to start answering that question? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really like, it was never a career choice for me to go into polar research, um, but I always had like the uh, the interest there and I would always sort of been uh, looking at the stuff that Nansen and Amundsen did and just being sort of you know interested in the in the ends of the world uh, and so when I saw this job at Bath which combined um, polar research and engineering I thought uh, let me let me give that a go and uh, here I am. That's a good place to be. <laughs> Um, so you touched a little bit already on like your inspiration and something very fun uh, in childhood, which is like Legos. Um, but I, I would like to ask you what is what you think now is fun about being a marine or mechanical engineer? Yeah, um, I, I still just love like building stuff, but also with marine engineering, usually you know, it involves anything that goes in or on top of the water. And so I get to be close to water and yeah, I just love water and oceans. And so I think, I think that's one of the really fun things. I think I myself would be, as I don't have a lot of experiences on ships, I would be quite afraid of the uh, seasickness and all that comes with that. Are you very comfortable on ships or how has that been for you? No, not at all. Like uh, for for a person who loves water so much and uh, would would go swimming any day if, if I could, um, I I do get seasick. Uh, take takes me around about a week to sort of get my sea legs. Uh, so I usually have like a seasickness pill or something like that the first couple of days, and then as I kind of get into it, I, I I get used to it. Yeah, must be difficult, but. It's good that there's some things that can help with that as well. Um, so uh, what's the best thing about working at BAS then? Um, I think for me, it's the, uh, the freedom and the adventure. And uh, by freedom, I, I think, I mean, the, uh, 
there's a lot of freedom to to build your work day around your own personal needs uh and you know the time of day you start and leave and working from home and like even pre pre pandemic times you know working from home was was uh always an option and kind of having having your own routine rather than passes routine uh and then obviously going to antarctica and, and to the arctic is is uh, a great bonus we've already listed a lot of great things uh that probably many careers don't uh, give those opportunities but um is there something that you could kind of single out as the most surprising thing about your current work hmm I think uh, like something I hadn't quite expected and maybe not thought about before starting here is like just how varied it is. Uh, like usually a lot of other jobs, there's more sort of mundanity uh, to, even though it might be different project and stuff, but you're still doing the same role in the different projects. But I feel like at Bass, it's just super varied, like from, you know, structural design one day to, you know, being in the field with fixing something with gaffer tape uh, the next day. Uh, so I think that that's something that pleasantly surprised me uh, was just how varied it is to work at BAS. Mm. And you're in Falklands for work, so for a good reason. And could you tell us a little bit more about what you're currently working on? Yeah, uh, I'm about to, uh, I'm in quarantine uh, at the minute, uh, so that I can go on a, a research cruise on the James Cook, uh, where we will then be investigating the uh, biology and oceanography around uh, Georgia, the Weddell Sea and uh, the Drake Passage. And also having a look at this A68A uh, iceberg. I've heard so many things about that iceberg. So can, can you just say the name again? Uh, yeah, it's the A68A. So anyone- Which is now to... in more, more than one piece, but yes, that was the original one. Yeah, anyone that wants to um, look it up, uh, there's definitely stuff out there in the media and it's, uh, it's yeah, a huge iceberg that was uh, heading towards South Georgia. So it's a very interesting story and it's cool that uh, Bjorg, you're going to be so close to the action with that one. Um, so yeah. from everything that you've kind of been talking about, it also it's very clear that you work very closely with, uh, with scientists. Um, and um, so I guess like science collaboration is a big part of your work. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of our nicknames uh, is, is science science support within the technical department because uh, a lot of our work as well is is as uh, the researchers get ideas and and grants and money they they might have um, equipment that they would like designed or built or changed. Um, so currently, I'm. I'm working on a instrument uh, that will be deployed in the Southern Ocean for a year that will look into how microplastics degrade. So that's quite interesting to be a part of. And it's quite a lot of variety from working with uh, like more uh, biological, maybe samples, and then also uh, plastics, which is completely different materials. Um, mm, yeah. So beyond like different experts, uh, what do you think is the value of having actually also people from different backgrounds and different areas um, collaborating together? Yeah, no, I, I think collaboration is like just extremely valuable. I, I mean, you can't possibly know everything that is out there and and getting different perspectives, you know, can sometimes be really, really priceless. And uh, I'm not sure who said it, but some someone clever, but yeah, there's no, there's no growth in an echo chamber. That's a good quote. Um, so what do you see as the big challenge in attracting students to, to STEM education today, actually? Hmm. I think for me, the main challenge is just the lack of role models. I think that is something I wish I had more of uh, when I was growing up. Um, and then particularly within like mechanical and marine engineering, there are just still still a bit of a bit of a lag uh, of, of female and other background um, engineers. Um, but I also think we can do a really, you know, a, a much better job of showing what it means to be an engineer uh, or in, in STEM um, after you've finished university. So, so rather than saying, you know, if you study engineering, the, the options are endless, 
we should perhaps be saying, you know, if you want to build ships or cars, then, you know, you should study naval engineering. Because um, I think sometimes the reading the catalogue and, and, and reading that your options are endless is, is um, can be a bit daunting. Whereas, you know, if you have an interest in ships and you look at that as a, as a 15 year old and you're like, oh yeah, I'd like to build ships, then okay, what do I need to do? Okay, naval architecture. I think I think that could sometimes help. I guess what what we're doing now is part of uh, the answer to my next question in a way as well, and and really builds up on what you're saying about role models. But you know, there's a, a big push on trying to um, make um, polar research also look very different from the uh, traditional view of the Arctic or Antarctic explorer was. A very certain stereotype without even have to, having to necessarily spill out uh, exactly what it what that is. Um, how do you think we can do better at attracting uh, different people into polar research beyond what this is, uh, you've already said? Yeah, uh, I mean, again, the role models uh, is, is a really important thing, I, I believe. But um, I also think we need to just make sure that you know, whatever organization you're in that that's like a really proactive focus on attracting a diverse staff uh, and that you're like actively looking for new ways and new arenas or platform where you can where you can find and attract people yeah and i i guess with the digital world it's uh, there's so so many more opportunities of doing that and just reaching individuals kind of so uh directly uh, even hopefully this interview, we can uh, in some ways uh, help it spread and put it somewhere on like vast social media or something. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. So final question, I think. <laughs> um, what is the coolest thing with engineering that you've ever done, whether it's work or personal life related? Hmm. Um, good question. Um... So I think one of the first things I did straight out of uni uh, was to go and uh, do uh, work with it within subsea uh, engineering. And uh, once there, I was responsible for transporting and, and lifting a, a 360-ton um, big uh, underwater umbilical reel. Uh, so that went from shore over to, over to a ship and. Uh, and it's just like the size of this is so cool. So we had these shackles, uh, which were going on a spreader bar to, to lift the reel itself. And, and to get the shackle on, we needed to forklift the shackle in and then crane the pin uh, into the shackle. And, you know, this, the shackle was as, as tall as tall as I am and as wide as I am. And I thought, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. <laughs> That sounds like a lot of responsibility to me. <laughs> uh, I, I do have a follow up question maybe on that. Um, how did you feel like kind of out of university then starting your career? And I don't know, like the project that you've just described, for example, like, did you, was it scary, exciting, both? Uh, did you feel ready? I don't know. Uh, no, I will, I will definitely describe that that particular project as a as a true baptism of fire. And I was like, like traveling to the yard. I was absolutely terrified. Uh, I also happened to be in France uh, and I did the mistake of saying bonjour uh, to everyone. And so they assumed that I uh, spoke French, which I didn't. And then proceeded to uh, do all of the safety talks in French, where I, where I had to stick up my hand at the end of the talk and say, uh, "Excuse me, could you could you do it again in English, please?" Um, but it was uh, it all went well, and um, and I drove home back to my hotel like yeah, uh, feeling hundred percent on top of the world uh, after after that day. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, no. Even even though it's scary and it's a lot of responsibility, it's uh, it's definitely fun. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that, that that's a good uh, good summary, <laughs> and I have very happy ending. Um, I do have to be a little bit mean and ask one more question. Um, you've talked a lot about role models 
and uh, mm-hmm. do you like do you feel like you've had in the even if we need more role models do you feel like you've had role models uh in the beginning of your career or throughout your career that have helped you uh kind of be where get to where you are today uh yeah definitely um i i actually think my mum uh is <laughs> standard answer but i actually think uh she's uh she's been very helpful in in the sense of like uh she was in the army herself which she was quite alone as a woman in the army in the 80s uh so i definitely think that was a good sort of like a, this you know there's no uh, harm in being a woman in sort of a male dominated dominated world and also just like the push of you know when i came home and said this is what i want to be she was like okay fine uh and i'm sure she would have said that regardless of what i said i wanted to be uh and within the engineering um I can't remember having like a specific sort of like that this is a role model, but um, there's definitely been people as as I've you know gone to uni and I work as well, where there's been other other females uh, which have been incredibly helpful and just yeah nice and you know someone you can go ask ask questions to. Yeah, just highlights that kind of importance of the community that's around you uh, at all times yeah. yeah i think if i had to name someone though or like uh, <laughs> i don't actually remember her name but the uh the project manager of the panama canal the extension or like the when they widened the kind of panama canal the second time around uh that was a uh that was a female uh, uh, engineer from panama which i think yeah when I learned that, I was like, yeah, go girl. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. We'll have to look her up then. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Is there anything else that you feel like you would like to add? No, I think yeah, that was uh, some really good questions, Pilvi. Thank you for, for, for asking them. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time in quarantine from the Falklands uh, to talk to us and do this recording. Um, uh, it's very much appreciated and it's just great to hear about your career and, and uh, your background as well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye.